Yes, so thanks, uh, thanks for your attention. And so I'm going to talk about alpha steam, which is a, a cranial electrostimulation therapy. It's actually a, a related to a, a, a clinical study that Richard, who just spoke, was, uh, was uh, involved in, uh, in leading. Uh, so my role in MindTech is um, from a technology background, and thanks to a multidisciplinary program funded by the research councils, I also uh, spent the last 15 years as a health economist. So, so I'm going to talk, you might remember some of these uh, slides from last year, but I think it's necessary to, make, to give some context to the health economics. And so this is the study. Uh, so um, it's in the area of generalized anxiety disorder, um, which affects 4.4% uh, of the um, percent of the UK population. And it's one of the, the, the two common mental health problems in the IAP service, as I think most of you all know. And it's usually uh, treated by cognitive behavior th behavioral therapy, um, antidepressants, and you know, sort of medication. So, and, and obviously, I, uh, you probably already know that IAPT is, um, uh, is, is paid 50% for activity and 50% for achieving uh, remission, where there's a recovery threshold for, uh, for um, generalized anxiety disorder, which we're talking about today, using the GAD7 scale of um, a score of less than equal or equal to 7. So, just in case you haven't come across this GAD7 scale, which is used in IAPT, just, so it's, it's, it's a measurement from zero to three in, on um, seven points, asking questions about nervousness, um, worrying, um, ability to relax, um, 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 uh, becoming, being irritable or, or fearful. And so, uh, as I said, so a score of, uh, of uh, seven or less is really an average of of having those, um, those symptoms over several days rather than uh, most of the days within a two-week period. So there's a nice guideline for GAD, and the main treatment, as we've said, is, is in the IAP service, and of which there are uh, um, many um, across the UK. So, so now I'm going to talk about something which is quite different than CBT, so different principle altogether. And it's, so, um, and it's based around a, a technique, uh, and in this case, a product uh, um, called electro, um, cranial electrotherapy stimulation. And the product in question is Alpha Stim, and we, they're, they're in the exhibitors uh, hall above if you want to talk to them. And also, uh, w um, I can, just to demonstrate the size of the device, I've put it around my neck. So it's a low current device. It's classed as in the European uh, regulations as a low risk. Uh, class 2 device, a class 2A in the US for, for, um, for anxiety, it's also a class 2 device. And so it's battery powered, and what you would do is you would clip this to your both ears and turn it on, and it would sort of create a tingling seal, uh, feeling which you would um, administer for 20 to 60 minutes a day. Okay, so mechanism of action. Well, there's, there's still some, some, some work to be done in, 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 by neuroscientists, but, the, sort of, but these are the, sort of the, the, main, the main areas uh, for, uh, for its action. So cortical deactivation, increased alpha waves, hence the name, and decreased uh, beta and delta uh, related to anxiety, relaxation, alertness, fatigue, and there's also uh, a... Um, there's, there's also some effects detected in the area of, of, of um, serotonin and noradrenaline and, and, uh, levels, which are, which are increased and decreased in cortisol. Okay, so uh, pr uh, previous clinical evidence that Richard talked about last year, so there was, a, um, uh, there was an RCT conducted, um, and in this case measured on a different scale, Hamilton Anxiety Score, and so... Uh, and you know, with, with, some, with, 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 with an effect for, against the sham treatment, uh, which showed that, um, with the blue line, that people with, with, um, with, the, with the therapy um, uh, were gained a, a sort of below threshold after, after five weeks. And there are five other RCTs that have been conducted that we know about, and, um, and yeah, a few adverse effects. <coughs> Some, some sensations of vertigo have been, um, um, patients have reported, and some um, skin ear irritation from the electrodes, quite minor, considered to be minor. So, so the, the, the IAP study was completed, Richard talked about it last year, and so uh, and we, we were interested to find out what proportion of patients would benefit and go below, uh, um, go into remission on, on, the, on their uh, 
anxiety over a 12-week period of using, using alpha-stim. That'd be measured either as recovery, so going below threshold, which is, as I said, below or equal to seven on the GAD scale, or with reliable, and reliable improvement of five points reduction in that scale. And for the purposes of, of this talk, so I'm interested in about the, the cost of alpha-stim, and does that can that, be, can that offset the treatment over 12 weeks and a 12-week follow-up? So the results of that study, and I, I won't say too much because we, this was presented last year, but essentially you know, good results for remission, uh, 45%, higher for the reliable improvement measure, which is that five-point drop, and, and, and then I suppose the headline figure, sort of 45% um, went into recovery, which is the seven or less, and the five-point drop. And, and, and also importantly, uh, a zero uh, reliable deterioration, which is also measured, so nobody, nobody um, went the other way with this, with this therapy. We can compare that to step three CBT, which is slightly better on reliable recovery in, in, in the population, of closer to 55%. A small reliable deterioration here, which we didn't see with, with alpha-stim, and around 40% reliable recovery for, um, for counselling, which was the, um, the comparator in the Guyani study that's cited there. So, again, just a snapshot of the, of, of the improvements over time. So this is over 12 weeks, and we can see that quite a large decrease on the top left in the GAD7, but also improvements in the PHQ9 for depression, which is also part of the IAT uh, metrics, and uh, work and social adjustment scale, and quality of life, uh, also medium effects, and a large effect on insomnia. So, conclusions from that study, that it seems to be that alpha-stim was, uh, was, was acceptable and well tolerated by, by, by patients in the IAP service, so I should have said this was conducted in Leicester City and Leicestershire. Um, so, so the, and there were clinical effects that were detected within four weeks and sustained over the 12 weeks. So I've already mentioned the, 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 the uh, significant improvement um, of 63%, 45 for the remission recovery, which is quite similar, uh, but a little bit less than IAT step three. And we noticed that you know, only around a half then went on to, to have or need CBT because they had already recovered. So let's now go on to look at the cost savings. So this is a cost minimization analysis. So the idea is we're going to compare alpha stim, the alpha stim pathway with the, with the CBT. And we can, well, what we're doing here is it's not a, um, a cost effectiveness study that was done at the same time as the trial, but it was, um, um, it was an af afterwards using costs from the literature and in particular, in particular using the Guyani uh, study that I mentioned. Uh, we've got we also took into account three different models of, our, of CBT, um, so different numbers of uh, sessions and intensity lengths of sessions. So we, we used three models there. Uh, we, we took uh, session costs, again, from the literature from an important paper um, from 2013, uh, looking at, so we've got, the session, we've got the session costs for the, for the short 60-minute 60, 60 um, or 90-minute session, and then we up, uplifted those from the, from the from the, the period of that uh, trial to, tw to the 2016 prices, which were the, the, the latest available during the, uh, the time of the study. Um, we also estimated the cost of Alvastin per patient, which is based on utilization of that device. Uh, so, um, so we, we uh, using it, utilize it, so the unit price being 450 pounds without VAT, but then with a the utilization across, across a number of patients, in this case, to 15, and then look with, um, dependent on the lifetime of the device, and then we also took, they also took into account non-return of the devices, which is obviously a possibility for anything that you, that you might give out in service. And then you've got some additional, uh, uh, you've got some additional therapist time, um, postage of the equipment, consumables and cleaning, that kind of thing. So that, and that's where the 70% per session comes from. So the health economics, again, I said it was the three models. Uh, we, we, I, we also en enlisted the help of a, of a health economics consulting uh, consultancy at University of East Anglia, who are, who are accredited and are co-authors on the paper that we've, published, uh, that we've submitted on this. So they, we work with them to develop the following decision tree. 
So it's just a typical health economics model. So the top is one branch of the tree, the bottom is the other branch. And it's a fairly straightforward one to, to, to understand because we've inserted, it's a waiting list study, so we've inserted the alpha stim therapy at the beginning of the, 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 uh, the, the branch of the, um, of the intervention and then obviously not, not in, the, in, in, in the control. So that's how it was done in the study. And then we can follow through what the recovery rates and the overall costs were to the ends of the branches. And I've just shown the ones for the, for the, uh, the, ends, of, of, at the ends of the branches, which resulted in 79 recovery for, um, for the control at a cost of £1,294 and an overall response of 89% at a lower cost of £753 with alpha stim inserted in there. And that reflects the fact that around 50% of the people recovered in the trial in this study recovered with alpha stim and didn't need to go on to CBT. Although just to be clear, some of them, because it was a waiting list study, some of them did go on to have CBT, but that's also included in the figures. So again, health economics results. I'm not really, I'll just look at the headline figures. Um, so this is really saying okay, what, what were the costs overall costs for the for CBT, what were the what was the overall cost for the pathway of alpha stim, what's the difference? And 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 then we did that for the three models and we also did a sensitivity analysis. So the headline figures are for the standard of care CBT, which is the sort of lowest number of an intensity of sessions, there was a four hundred and around uh, five hundred and forty one pounds saving per patient. And then if you consider the, sort of more, the more intense models that are out there, then the, the savings are even higher. And the other thing, so the top graph there on the right is, is the probabilistic sensitivity analysis, and which, which I don't need to explain too much because Richard uh, showed one in the last uh, presentation. But in this case, I didn't even show the other quadrants. All of the, all of the points were in the, um, in the in the cost, so the higher response and, and cost saving in the alpha stim arm. Um, so essentially that's what you would call dominant in, in, in a health economic analysis. And we can also, as, a, as another way of doing the sensitivity, say, well, how, if we said that alpha stim costs 70 pounds, how, how high would it have to be for us to not to just about break, only break even? And we'd have to increase the patient cost to 20 pounds for that to happen. So that's quite a lot larger than the 70 pounds that we were talking about. Uh, so, okay, there's some limitations. There always are with these things. It wasn't, it wasn't part of the RCT. It wasn't, in fact, this, the study that Richard presented last year wasn't an RCT. Um, it's um, obviously the outcomes were, in terms of uh, the proportion, which is within a population, were not as good as CBT in terms of the recovery rates. Um, uh, but actually, you know, these are actually the figures that we got for alpha stim were comparable, you could say, and also better than some IAP services, because obviously the figure from Guyana is also an average, and better than counselling. So obviously we had to uplift the costs. We only did, yeah, it was a 12-week study, although that's quite typical with a follow-up. And then, you know, we have to think about the, uh, the modelling, because okay, so it's in the IAP context. Um, and we, did, we do see a, you know, a promise of a cost saving of at least £450 per patient with, with, with alpha stim. And then some other possible benefits which, which could be investigated further. Uh, CBT, the IAP service, uh, maybe may, may, uh, could, could save time potentially because this kit's given to people that they, that they use at home. And also less uh, uh, CBT sessions may be needed for people that go on to, um, to, alpha stim, sorry, to CBT after alpha stim. That's fairly that's speculative at the moment. So next steps, we've, we've sent the, the results for publication. That's Richard, uh, myself, we're involved in that paper. Um, the, the manufacturer, having seen these results, is very interested in taking this forward to a nice submission. This is the Medical Technologies Evaluation Programme um, and so providing this evidence. The, we need to investigate um, improvements. There was improvements in depression, which were seen, but Perhaps it, but we need to look at that in more, in more detail and also patients with primary insomnia because we also saw that that was, that was improved over the 12 weeks. And then there's an also interest, I think, with our, with our colleagues in Northampton to, to investigate its use in the inpatient setting. So just some general points that I think we've learned from this. 
is that we, um, that we, uh, you know, it, it clear, we, there's clearly potential for increasing policy, uh, in, of quality of life. It's not only about preventing relapse, um, though it's we're getting cost savings from patients improving early. And, and this is, but this is really you know, dependent on having really good outcomes data, such as we have in IAPT, and really that cheaper, cheaper treatment options can provide large sa savings, but then we, need to stay, we need to show they work, and they're not that inferior to more expensive options, maybe like first-line drugs, and, and are acceptable to patients. Thank you.